by popular demand of two close friends, I am doing another music nut night. In the interim, since my last video info dump, I have learned more about the history of American music. I've gotten for myself a new turntable, and I have inevitably purchased for myself a few more of these wonderful noise discs. So, what's this buddy that we're going to be listening to today? Here, let me prop it up. Boop. This is Turkey in the Straw performed by two fiddlers, Henry C. Gilliland and Eck Robertson. And I am extremely excited to share this with you because this little buddy right here was on my bucket list of records I wanted to get. Because yes, I have a bucket list of records I want to get. And some records I'm sure I will never be able to get. The Elvis Presley Sun records go for prices that are yikes. And I don't believe in spending several hundred dollars for six minutes of music. But this ended up being an amazing, exciting snack for me. So that's why we're here today. So why is this buddy so special? Well, it's because this in many ways represents, get this, the start of the commercial recording industry for country music. This is the beginning. And the reason that this is beginning is that this record, this song that you're listening to, is from the first day of the first recording session of the first people to release a record that we now call country music. It, it's pretty cool. So, um, it is to point out, this is not the first record that they released. An Eck Robertson record was released before this one. This is the second one that they released, but it is still, again, from the first recording session. So let's talk about this. Who are our players? They are both Texan fillers. Neither of them were born in Texas, but they both lived in Texas. So we're just, for simplicity's sake, saying Texan fiddlers. The first one is Eck Robertson, Alexander Campbell Robertson, I believe. And he was born in 1887, grew up in the Texas Panhandle since a young age. He did do music basically as a career in a roundabout way because he worked as a piano tuner. And then he and his wife would go around and do some vaudeville performances and then, you know, got to do those fiddler conventions too. So Eck Robertson is somebody who went up to the um, old Confederate veterans reunion in 1922, and that's where he met the other fiddler that we're going to be hearing, um, Henry Gilliland. Eck Robertson, his father was a Confederate veteran in the Civil War, and Gilliland himself was actually one of the people who fought for the Confederacy in the Civil War. And um, he was born a few decades earlier than Eck Robertson. In fact, he was performing in fiddler conventions by the time Eck Robertson was born. Gilliland was somebody who, um, he helped found like a fiddler's association, like the old Fiddlers Association of Texas, I believe it was called, in 1901, and he was one of those people who, um, he also had multiple political offices that he held in Texas and Oklahoma, and he used the Fiddlers Conventions not just as a means of playing music, but also spouting out some of the lost cause ideology, you know, the Confederacy was heroes, they had good ideas, that sort of thing. So, you know, he'd talk about those things at the Fiddler Conventions. And so that's why Eck Robertson and Gilliland ended up meeting, even though they're both from Texas, they ended up meeting in Virginia for a Confederacy, um, old Confederate veterans reunion, performed for about 4,000 veterans together on the fiddles, and then they're like, hey, buddy, you sound pretty good, we sound good together. Gilliland has a contact. Let's charge up to New York and see if those buddies at Victor can record us for a record. At this point in time, yeah, hat. Um, at this point in time, Victor was, you know, selling commercial records, but they weren't focusing on something like this. 
Victor records were for, you know, like classical music and orchestras and stuff like that. So this is an entirely new territory for them. And it's sort of pretty awesome that we ended up getting that. And so on the first day of the recording sessions, it was June 30th, 1922. These two men performed together. I believe it was Gilliland played the lead part and Eck Robertson played a second part. And then on the second day, there were six more songs that were recorded by Eck Robertson by himself. And they released their first record, which was a combination of Arkansas Traveler and Sally Gooden in the end of 1922. Technically, it was released September 1st, 1922, but it was a limited release and it wasn't in full circulation until April 1923. And that was the first record, first commercial record for hillbilly slash country music. And it, Victor didn't really promote it. It didn't sell that great. But then we had another buddy come along and his name was Fiddlin' John Carson. Woot, woot, woot. And he released a record and that was the first successful country music record. And people were like, whoa, Little and John Carson. And Victor's like, well, we have more records from these guys that can come out. So they released the second record, ding, 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 and a third record. The other songs that they recorded during those sessions were never released. As far as these performers were concerned, this was the only recordings that we got from Gilliland because he died two years later in 1924. Eck Robertson would come back in 1929 to do more recordings with Victor, and we actually have a whole ton of lost recordings from Robertson. And up until the day he died in 1975, he was saying like, yeah, Victor did not treat me as well as they should have, blah, 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 complain, complain. Um, but we can still look back at what did get released by Victor because it now has that historic value. So there we go. That is what we are listening to as far as the artists. Now, what is the song that we're listening to? Let's talk about that. All right, so what is this song that we're listening to right here? Turkey in the Straw. Chances are, if you're from the United States, you recognize that title because it is a popular American folk tune to this day. It's catchy. Apparently, it's used in ice cream trucks, although I've never heard it that way. Um, growing up, I learned some variations of the lyrics. And this is all despite the fact that this buddy is controversial for being pretty racist. And, um... That's because some of the lyrical variations that were very popular came from the blackface minstrel period and were performed widely circa the 1870s to the 1930s. And so, you know, a little bit of discomfort goes into what this song carries with it. Now, that said, this song is actually older than that, too in both the United States and the place of its origination. We call it American Folk Tune, it actually came across the sea. Um, and it's easier to talk about where the melody came from if we talk about the A section and the B section separately. The A section we can trace back 1795 or older, and that's with a song called um, The Old Rose Tree. I've listened to The Old Rose Tree, and the melody is unmistakably similar, so I think that most people, you know, in the folklore world agree on this one. And so it comes across the ocean to the United States, you plop in several other different lyrical variations, and, you know, you can talk about that. For instance, in 1857, a man named Howard Waters published this in New York under the title of, what was it? My grandmother lived on yonder little green or something like that. And so keeps on going, gets passed around, lots of things happen to it. The B section, I've seen more variation and discussion on where the B section melody came from. I've seen the Bonnie Black Eagle suggested. So yeah, 
either way, both of these melody fragments came from the British Isles and then got transplanted into the United States along with all of their melodic variations and lyrical variations. One final factoid is that even though Eck Robertson and Henry Siegeland have the honor of being the first people to record and release a record for the genre of country music, what became the genre of country music, they are not the first people who recorded Turkey in the Straw. Um, in the pop field, I guess they called it that, a black-faced minstrel recorded this. His name was Billy Golden. And that one goes back to a release of 1897. This version that we're going to be listening to today, you don't have to worry about the lyrics at all because it is an instrumental with a twin fiddle duet. So let's take a listen right now. It's about time, so let's put it on. All right, see, I did get myself a new turntable, one that has good quality and makes me feel nice and happy and safe about playing my old records on it. So here we go. Um, I am going to do the turkey and the straw side for today. And if you want to hear Ragtime Annie later, please give me a holler. You know I will always be happy to make new info dump videos. You hardly need to encourage me. <laughs> okay. And here we are, Turkey in the Straw, recorded from 1922. <laughs> There you have it. 
in listening to that recording of Turkey in the Straw, you have literally heard the first day of the first session of the first musicians to ever make a commercial country music record. This is the beginning of history.